Cost-effective new technology could revolutionize your healthcare experience. Yeah, that's right. It's actually called a digital twin. This is a really fascinating idea. And here to break down what it is and how it's used is Nine News health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley. Dr. Coley, good morning. Good morning. All right, for everybody out there that doesn't know, I only learned this morning, what is a digital twin? Yeah, it's your identical twin, essentially a computer simulation of either your organs, your body, your health system, but your personalized twin. So every person's digital twin looks exactly like them, but not like anyone else. And it's used in medicine now to predict disease, to predict treatment outcomes, to actually fill in gaps that we don't know. So how is a digital twin built? Yeah, so they look, look at all the inputs and they put it all together. So they look at your lab data, they look at your genomics and your genetics, they look at your imaging, your MRI. They're even incorporating wearables. And so, you know, things that we use like our watches and our rings and such to measure our heart rate and et cetera. And then they use AI and machine learning to actually create a simulation or a model. And the idea here is that we put in all these inputs, you've essentially created a digital replica of your organ, let's say your heart, for example. And then you can predict how the heart is going to respond to certain interventions. Interesting. So how would you apply this to your patients? Yep. So there's a few different things you can do in medicine. So first, of course, the research potential is incredible, <coughs> right? You're talking about having billions of digital twins out there potentially because we're collecting data on everyone who comes to the health system. Creating their digital twin is as simple as using sort of a computer simulation. You can predict how, how populations will respond to disease, how they'll age, how they'll develop disease, and essentially almost a crystal ball to look into the future, digital crystal ball. You can also predict how they respond to certain treatments. So if you go to your cardiologist right now, you have high blood pressure. They pick one of three medicines kind of out of a hat and see how you do. This is is going to be a personalized response where you actually simulate the different responses. And in cancer treatment, they're actually doing really, really well with this because they're looking at the, the behavior of the tumor, then they're looking at the chemotherapy, and they're looking to predict how the tumor is going to respond. So you mentioned cancer. What other diseases can this work for? Yep, so heart disease just in the office, but even stents and surgery. So you think about whether you're having you know, heart surgery, a plastic surgery, or any other kind of surgery, you can predict how you'll respond if they do it this way versus this way. If they use this type of stent or this type of valve versus a different one. Obviously, we talked about cancer orthopedics. When we're replacing joints, we can predict which type of joint will give your body the best functionality in the long term. And then diabetes, even something as simple as how to dose your insulin. How does your body respond to the sugar? And how much insulin should you be getting? So because it is so personalized, how would you use this to say predict aging? In people. So this I find really fascinating because none of us know how we're going to age, right? But if I have a personalized digital twin of myself and I put in my chronic diseases, my family history, my current biological age, these are inputs that I've measured, it can actually predict when I'm going to start becoming disabled, when I might need full-time care, help me with long-term planning, help me to understand even how chronic diseases like Parkinson's and such might manifest. Would it be able to prevent something too if you know that, if you're able to tell that ahead of time, That's say, okay, exactly let me right. change this now? Now. That's exactly right. That's the point, right? It's not just to accept the truth. It's actually to predict it and then change it today so that that truth never happens. So the idea is if you know that you're going to develop dementia at 65, well, I'm going to be more aggressive about your dementia risk factors today so, so that I prevent that outcome. And last question for you quickly, Dr. Coley. You had mentioned wearables before. As I have my Apple Watch on, you know, I want to know how the, what the relationship is like. So it's actually a bi-directional relationship. So this will inform wearables. Like, where should you wear your Apple Watch? Should you wear it on the left wrist or the right wrist? Where the data is better? And then the other way around. The Apple Watch tells us to make the model better. But before we get it out there, we need to make sure it works. Right. We need to make sure it's ethical. And who owns our digital twin? Is it me that owns my digital twin? Is it the government? Is it the medical system? Who has access to it? So these are all questions that still need to be answered, but I'm really excited about the potential of this technology. Yeah, very interesting. All right, Dr. Coley, thank you very much. And you can find all of Dr. Coley's appearances at 9news.com slash Dr. Coley.